Hi there. This video is an accompaniment to lesson two. In lesson two, we have not yet gotten around to bidding, but we are trying to teach you how to determine a contract. And in this lesson, we teach you how to count high cut points and how to count short suit distribution points or DP. So on this slide, we say that there's a grand unified theory of contract determination. You count total points equals high cut points plus DP. But DP is zero if you're considering a no tram contract. And as we said earlier, you prefer a major suit over a no trump suit over a minor suit contract. And I'll explain why in a moment. But one thing is clear for beginners because beginners usually can only concentrate on game bonuses. For a game bonus, common to 3 no trump and 4 H for S, it's about a 25 point range. That's easy to remember. And everything else is four points offset per trick. So for example, if you're considering a 5C contract, a 5C contract starts at 29 points, which is four points above the 25 point minimum for a four hard contract. 13 to 17 to 21 to 25 to 29 to 33, all four points apart. Similarly for this, 17 to 21 to 25, four points apart. Easy to remember if all you do is just remember the 25 points for major or no three no trump game contract and offset everything else by four points per trick or per level. And I showed you this slide, which calculated the HCP and the DP for each set of hands. And you realize that you can have quite different contracts depending on whether you're considering no trump or a trump contract and depending on whether you count distribution points or don't count distribution points. So in this lesson, we're going to play using a modified procedure for bidding, a simplified one. Starting from dealer going clockwise, announce your HCP. Then you determine the declarer dummy pair as the one with the highest HCP and you choose your declarer. And starting from declarer, you state your preferred suit and its length. And declarer can ask dummy for her DP. After that, declarer can go back to this chart and figure out what is the best contract. Of course, the bonuses count too, right? For, for four heart or four S, 10 tricks, you get 300 points. Three no trump, you get 300 points. And minor 5C, 5D, you get 300 point game bonus. Why do we say that a major contract is preferred over a no trump game contract, even though in a major game contract, you require 10 tricks. For a three no trump, you require nine tricks. It is understandable that a minor contract is last priority because it has 11 tricks required. When you are in a trump contract, it is actually somewhat easier to make tricks. So from experience, a four heart or four spade contract provided you have a trump fit, 
it's actually it's slightly easier to make than a three node trunk contract for the same given HCP. All right, so you get this to consider what levels you can play in. And then you consult this to make sure that you are trying to get the best bonus you possibly can. from this procedure. So as a summary, you want to be able to see what kind of contract you can play in, and you use points to evaluate the strength of your hand and the strength of your partner's hand. In a normal contract bridge, you can only ever approximately know the strength of your partner's hand. In this lesson, we'll require your partner to explicitly state the strength of her hand. Once you know the strength of your hand and your partner's hand, you can use this to determine what contract to play in. But besides the points, you also need two additional criteria to determine if you can play no trump or trump contracts. For trump contracts, you and your partner should have the majority of cards in the trump suit. Eight cards at least. This is called a fit. For no trump contracts, you should be reasonably certain their opponents cannot make use of their long suits to make you discard cards and lose them. You need stoppers, basically. And to recap, this is what stoppers are. You want to have a reasonable assurance that you can win at least a trick in that suit and stop opponents from running that suit. So for example, suits with this kind of suit combination, uh, uh, honor combinations may be considered well stopped because no matter what opponents do, you can at least win one trick. Card combinations like this may be considered weakly stopped because whether you can stop your opponents may depend on where opponents hold yeah, ace kings on the left or on the right. Lastly, cards with if suits with four cards can be considered stopped. Why is that so? Because you have four cards, your opponents and partner have nine cards between them. And on average, your partner may have three cards, leaving six cards maybe seven in your opponent's hands. Recall that a three no charm contract needs nine tricks. You can afford to lose four tricks. Therefore, you should only be concerned or mainly concerned if opponents can have five cards or more on one side or the other side. By the virtue of you having four cards, you have taken away cards potentially from opponents. So from experience, we say that four cards, even if they are no honors, can be considered weakly stopped. Suits in which you know your partner is preferred or has four cards in can be considered stopped for a very similar reason. After all, you are playing as a team. Let's ignore these two first because they will only come in when we are doing bidding. Sometimes you just have the points and you cannot be sure that you have stoppers in our suits. You may still wish to take a risk and bid no charm anyway because of the game bonus. Now, so, Bidding tips for declarer and dummy. This follows from what I've said before. The order of preference for contract is major over anti over minor. When declarer sees that she has a five or more cards in a major, that should be the preferred suit. Otherwise, prefer the longest minor suit. 
basically state your longer suit with preference for major. If declarer has stated a major suit, dummy should try to state the same suit if dummy determines that as a partnership, they have eight or more cards, basically a fit. You want to tell your partner, the declarer, that there is a trump fit in majors. If declarer has stated a minor suit, dummy may want to declare another long suit in, as a preferred suit. There is to convey information to declarer that you have coverage of a suit. That suit in which declarer may in fact be weak in. So you are playing information exchange with your declarer to determine stoppers. On some occasions, if declarer has stated a minor suit and dummy has a minor suit fit, a good minor suit fit, let's say four cards, on uh, in addition to declarer's five cards, nine cards, or 10 cards. And if dummy is short in one suit, let's say a singleton or a void in another suit, then possibly dummy may choose to show the minor suit fit by declaring the same minor suit as declarer. At the moment, this is not extremely important because this bidding protocol is purely artificial just for the sake of this lesson. In the next lesson, we will be embarking on the actual bidding. So don't feel stressed about it and just bid. For opponents, the left-hand side opponent of declarer has a simple choice. Just choose your longer suit that is not the declarer's preferred suit. Don't, don't, don't beat your declarer's preferred suit. Beat your longest other suit. For declarer's right-hand side opponent, you can also choose your longest and best suit that is not the declarer's suit. In fact, if your longest and best suit has a fit with your partner's declared suit, you may want to declare that so that you know you have a long combined suit. Now, if declare and dummy choose the same suit as a fit, you might want to suspect that declarer will choose a trunk contract, in which case you can also alternatively choose a suit with an ace or a king in it so that partner can lead to it. Or a suit that is short so that partner might be able to see if there's a roughing opportunity in that suit. 